I am Dr. Natalie Bititure. I'm the Chief of Staff of Simba Group of Companies and the founder of the Her Women's Platform. Her is a platform created in 2019 to act as a safe space for women to come together and discuss work and business without feeling uncomfortable. It has helped increase the number of female entrepreneurs and helped them grow since its inception. I started getting lots of questions from women in my inboxes on my social media, like about career advice or how to start a business or what to do when this happens. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself repeating it a lot and like yeah. having relationships with these women in like inbox. Mm -hmm. So we made a WhatsApp group like three years ago now, before. Whoa. And so it started as a WhatsApp group and where we'd like talk about different issues that women face in like the workplace. Mm. One of the big ones was sexual harassment at the time. And then sort of like when, work when life what balance. year was that? 2019. Ah, and so okay. women kept like adding their sister, their friend, their colleague, and the group grew really big. And then we had to make it two groups. Mm. But then it was taking up so much of my time because like one chat, mm. everyone has like responses, everyone had questions. Mm. So it was becoming really busy. So we started doing in-person events as well. Mm -hmm. So like every three months, um, we'd have like a group of ladies come to the hotel on Saturday mm -hmm. and like would talk about different issues. And then I started also doing trainings on different topics. Yeah, like I think I've seen some speaking, of you. Yes. A goal setting one. Um, and then COVID happened. <laughs> so we had to stop the in-person ones. Yeah. And so we moved to a Facebook group because it was easier to manage so many. I think we were like 400 at the time. Mm. And then throughout the of 2020, it grew from 400 to 3,000 over a Ooh, year. Yeah, Round just, of applause. <laughs> <laughs> the group well just done. kept growing. Yeah. And so it was also fun. Like I wasn't working. So mm -hmm. I had all this time. I'd sit in the house alone and film content and mm. like teach stuff and we do lives and mm. discussions. So it kind of just grew organically. Mm. And now this year we've started doing monthly, monthly events yeah. so that we get like more regular mm. because, you know, I think in the last two years we've all missed the in-person networking. Yeah, the physical and, touch yeah. of everything. Yeah. So it's something true. we're doing now and we get different guest speakers every month mm. that reflect the topic we were discussing in the Facebook group. Mm. And so they get to meet the guest speaker, ask the different questions mm. and interact with each other. And also by doing it physically, we can have exhibitions. Mm -hmm. So ladies who have been Businesses bring samples, they sell their products. So it's really more interactive and fun now. Mm. One thing is managing a group. Mm. Like you get lots of different personalities, different opinions. Mm. And but we are opinionated in this generation, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> which I think is a good thing really? but you have to sort of cultivate like a respectful environment so mm -hmm. people are not harassing each other or bullying each other or insisting one way is better than the other yeah I'm a very like I like to think I'm a progressive person so I feel like everyone has the right to their own opinion and their way of doing things the other week I told Quizzy I'm Switzerland and we all laughed <laughs> about it yeah neutrality yeah, yeah I think it's important to be that neutral space so everyone can share and feel safe sharing and mm. feel safe asking questions and answering without someone coming down on you or judging you yeah so managing that and trying to sort of build this environment mm. where you're not being judged or being pushed and you're protecting each other mm -hmm. was like a hard thing to like balance. Okay. And also now as it's grown, I feel like I don't want it to be just about me and what I think or what my answer is to every question. Mm. So we're trying to like grow the space so that everyone answers the different questions or yeah. different ladies suggest different things. There's so many topics I'm not an expert on. I'm of also course. just like figuring it out. Yeah. So I also learn. Mm. And then there's also so many ladies who share and everyone else learns from them mm. and like what they've gone through. So I think that's been a really interesting process over the last like year now to yeah. try and get to that space, that balance. That's very true. And so was it, would you say that it was actually easy for them to transition from online and they were more excited to actually meet physically? Mm. Or was it a bit, uh, some it's of them... It's a bit mixed. Because ah. a lot of them also are not here. Okay. A lot of women who are African women or Ugandan women, but they don't live in Uganda. Mm. So diaspora oh, in the group. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those who grew a lot during COVID. The ones who are in person love it and like are super yeah, excited. So I, even seen... you can see they attend <laughs> regularly. Yeah, that's so true. So it's really nice. You get to build relationships and like see people and feel the energy and get the feedback and ask what you guys want to see or what you want to do next time. Mm. And so I really like that aspect. I 
think a safe space is really important because over like the last 10 years and mm. the different things I've worked and different like projects, I would always notice how women don't speak up. They don't mm. ask questions. And in one of the projects, we worked in Ibanda in like a rural community. Once I started to realize that at the end of every like training and session, I'd ask the ladies, okay, first stay for five more minutes. Mm. Then when all the men would leave, now we'd sit and talk and they'd ask all their questions and they had all these opinions. And yeah. I was just like, man, we have to like create these spaces where women can feel comfortable speaking up. I don't know. I, I get that it's cultural. Mm. So I don't, like women are not supposed to be opinionated or something mm. or like even the questions they ask, it's not that it's something personal or embarrassing. It's just like they don't feel comfortable to do it. Mm. And that was in a rural community. But then I realized it happens in Kampala as well. It happens all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. So women need to be like in groups where they can share things and not feel judged or not feel the pressure to behave like a man or act in a way that's expected of them in like a patriarchal society. Mm. I did a course at Harvard like two months ago and the class was all women. Mm. It was wild. The same problems I face in my work, they face in their work from all over the world. The same problems I hear the women in like the hard group discussing are the same problems they have. And even the professors there were like, the classes are so different when it's only women because you create that bond and like you understand each other. So if someone cries while they're explaining something, everyone's like sweet and yes. encouraging and say go on <laughs> but you wouldn't do that in like a room full of men you know <laughs> that's true they, you, they created like an intersection of problems for us to cry about but then be okay with it <laughs> exactly okay. so uh, yes. So in the hard space I feel like we have that where it's okay to ask any question mm. which is one of the main things that I wanted to make the space for but also you get to learn mm. because a lot of things I feel like I take for granted because I grew up in a household where we're talking about business all the time mm-hmm. so there are many like words you don't know if you don't grow up in business Mm. and like some of my friends or cousins will ask me like when they're starting their own businesses can you take me through these finance things i don't know what this is i don't want to sound stupid in public and i'm like girl no you will not sound stupid like let's let's get it out there let's talk about these things Mm. so that's one of the ways in her i feel like the safe space provides that for women like you can learn all these things you can send your questions we have different women who like we interview every month coaches, experts, Mm. giving advice, giving tips, giving their stories. And it also helps to like inspire because when you see another woman has gone through what you are struggling with and Mm. she's come out the other side, she's succeeded. It really helps to like encourage you and motivate you. So I feel like that's how we're trying to bring this energy about. Mm. That's, that's really nice. And just uh, by the way, um, when what at what age did you actually learn about the term emergency fund? When I was young, <laughs> like ten, eight, <laughs> because you talked uh, about you know growing up in a household where you're always talking about business. Yeah, yeah, you learn so many things about business and finance and mm. like leadership and branding and like (laughs) all these words that kids shouldn't know (laughs) and you're just like okay i'll take that yeah like my parents my dad used to call our like pocket money at school Mm -hmm. opex why operating expenses (laughs) he'd always ask us at the beginning of term like i need to know the capex and the opex what's capex capex is your capital expenses Uh right like those are things they have to buy for you like your school bag or like something they buy once and has to last the whole year Mm. but opex is like operating expenses like pocket money for food every day or lunch money or Mm. like the operating expenses (laughs) so small things like that i just grew up knowing capex and opex wow but those are like how you run businesses yeah literally but you know us growing up when i I didn't have those terms growing up like capex and it's my first time to hear those you know, I'm really happy with her as it is. Mm. And I feel like as long as we continue to grow... there's always room for... There's mm. always room for improvement. And now yes. I get super excited about partnerships. That's mm. what I'm excited about now. I think I'm driving my team crazy. Every <laughs> week I'm like, oh my God, we should partner with this person. Oh my God, let's do this. Yeah. So what we're working on right now is partnerships with different organizations that will support what we're doing. Like How partnerships with like women's mental health. We mm-hmm. just have a partnership now with You Belong. So we have women counselors who are going to come in and like talk about different things that affect women's mental health Mm. we have a partnership with psi international where we'll talk about women's reproductive health so like where to find clinics how to like prevent certain things what are the things you need to know about your own body and like the challenges the questions Mm. things like that we have partnerships with education partners two of them we're working on right now so courses that are not like by me but international courses diplomas 
okay. courses for internships, courses for coding. So you get a discount if you um, are a HAR member and we get to introduce them. So it's like edX. Yeah. Oh, nice. Exactly. Mm. Then also physical partnerships with local companies like Wazi, the glasses company. Mm. Yeah, I've they come that, to the actually, monthly meetups, yeah. they bring their products, they give us discounts, they give discounted eye tests to the women. Mm. We're also trying to get um, partners in the financial space. So mm. working with Imaisha and Numida. I forget the other one. Um, where were they? <laughs> they provide loans for entrepreneurs. Oh. So we're like trying to get lots of information from them about how they are processes go mm-hmm. so that our women entrepreneurs can also apply and get small business loans from them mm. so i feel like there's so much potential mm. and once you're so many women working together you have like more negotiating power as a group mm. so when we come to partners Other than when you stand alone exactly yeah, you get a true. better discount if you say we have access to thousands of women Ta-da. or like advertise your product <laughs> here or give us a discount there yeah. so i feel like that's something i'm excited about because there's so many different things we can do mm. with so many different partners and to make like the space more valuable for our members as well mm. so they want to like keep attending events they want to keep inviting their friends they want to keep you know asking your questions yeah because you get all this information and access that's true and you, and also interacting you know I'm an ENTP meaning I'm extroverted so uh, meeting new people is actually very fun it tweaks something nice and gives you the big feeling good yeah. effect yeah but that's something else that we can talk the about the network another is day. so helpful yeah that's true so uh, how are you ensuring that her beats the test of time i think the first thing for me was to make it not about me because mm, i know that it's bigger than you yeah when i'm running companies and i'm the one managing all the operations you're like pushing people every day mm. but this isn't like a company for me to manage so firstly we have a really good team like of women who work with us we also work a lot with the women in the group mm. like women who've been there for like since day one women who've done some of the courses some of the enthusiastic ones who come all the time so whatever i like them to take the lead what do you suggest what do you want how do we make this work mm. so that it grows organically and it stays relevant because there are so many different women's groups these days which is a wonderful That's true. thing That's true. and i feel like it's not useful for us to compete with each other mm. or to just copy what each other is doing so that's why I like initiatives like working with Future is Female, Pulse yeah. for Her, um, Pro Interns, working with different groups and we collaborate and share information, share our networks, you know, do things together, together. so that we all keep going and we all keep growing. Mm. Because I feel like the point for her is to keep women's empowerment moving and in a way that's useful for working women. Mm. And one of the ladies asked me about this the other day. She's like, what about students? What about women who don't work? I'm like, we call it working <laughs> women because it's about women who want to work. Yeah. Like you want to have a business, you want to grow in your career. Even if you are a student, even if you don't have a business Eventually, now, yeah, you just want mm. the information and the access. Yeah. So I feel like that's not something that's going to disappear anytime soon because there's still such a huge gap mm. in knowledge, in opportunity for African women, especially like, I, I don't see us going out of okay women know everything now <laughs> we don't need to have this anymore yeah and like you said it's still fun and it's networking and there's so yeah. many other like reasons that we can keep going and um, the main things that i love about these kind of events is that you learn and we are evolutionary as human beings so we feed uh, kaizen I think you've read the the monk yep. who sold this Ferrari. Was it the monk who sold the Ferrari or the alchemist talking about self improvement? So every day is basically that. You know, little by little, day. yeah, continuous improvement. Mm. That's true. And so, last but not least, what um, advice can you give to young entrepreneurs? Because we know that you've been in business for the longest time. Yeah, like startups. Yeah. Okay. My two pieces of advice, which mm. I suggest to all entrepreneurs. Yeah. One is research, one is resilience. Mm-hmm. I think those are like the two like most important like key things you need to have in you as an entrepreneur. Because research is so important. There's so many people who start businesses just on a whim or with an idea or someone says, I have this stock, try and sell it. And then you get stuck with it. Mm. You really need to do the research and it's your responsibility as an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's no one else's responsibility. You can't say they lied to me. They cheated <laughs> me. This, the, the, Nah. Excuses. Exactly. No excuses. Do your Period. own research. Go mm. out there. Go ask. Go see your competitors. 
go find out the information that you need to find out mm. and then resilience because it's hard that's true but i was reading something online the other day and people were saying they're tired of using the word resilience <laughs> what do you have to say about that feel tired okay <laughs> that means it's not for you <laughs> entrepreneurship Dead. is not for you because <laughs> you need resilience it's mm. a very long difficult struggle yeah. it's not like a job where you say okay it's five i've gone you know <laughs> the problems come with you wherever you go <laughs> in your dreams <laughs> everywhere everywhere you'd be surprised the yeah. things you'll dream about and wake up like oh, i forgot to do this at work yeah so you mentioned competitors as well yeah um how do you deal with that because you know uh there's so as you say there's so many women spaces that are all over uganda now so how do you deal with that Oh, me, I believe in collaboration over competition. Uh, okay. I think competition is good to like push you and like make each other better, uh, but it should not be so negative. Mm. And I think it's always better to collaborate. Like we're not going to run out of customers, guys. <laughs> There's too many people. How we, we was don't Uganda's population? <laughs> and it's growing so fast. So yeah. no, I don't worry about that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for uh, well and today I don't know if you have any last remarks maybe Thank you so much for having me it's always a pleasure Woop 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 Well folks that's it for this episode don't forget to check out the channel and subscribe to King and Nation and of course leave a thumbs up on this video Thanks for watching.